Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, uh, talking to you once more about something you might be able to watch in the night sky, this time for the week of September 20th, 2021. And as we've done in previous weeks here, we're going to circle back and talk about ideas we've already talked about and move them forward and, and, and see the kinds of things that, that we can see in the night sky, uh, sort of repeating, repeating, repeating. And we're going to talk about the moon this week. Uh, so we're folding it into things we've been talking about in our general astronomy class. It's what's in my brain right now, and it's, it's what's in the students' brains. So we're having great conversations about when we can see the moon and why we see the moon when we see the moon. And this is a fantastic week to follow that. So it's a great week to track the moon across there and think about why it's rising when it's rising. And uh, we'll start on the evening of the 20th. That's Monday. So Monday evening, the 20th, you go outside and you've got a, a pretty much a full moon. And that full moon is making a right triangle with a couple of pretty bright stars. And this, so that's circling back. We've talked the last few weeks about right triangle patterns in the skies that we can see that are sort of right triangles, 90 degree angles right there. And the moon is making a right triangle with two fairly bright stars, Dipta and Fomalhaut. Now, they're a little bit hard to see for those of us who are as far north as where I am at 43 degrees north. Uh, these are very southern stars, among the southernmost stars that we can see. And Fomalhaut is about... Well, it's more than twice as bright, I think, as, as in Dipta. And so it's a, it's a little easier to see, a little easier to pull out there. Uh, and that's about 15 degrees. That's another thing that we've talked about a lot. Hopefully you're getting good at this, uh, being able to hold your arm out, at, at your fist out there at arm's length and see that that's about 10 degree angle. Uh, and, and this is probably one and a half of those, so a little less than two fist widths, and that's about 26 degrees, as I recall. And so that's a little less than three fist widths across there. And so you should be able to see this, this, this triangle. Uh, great, so we can learn a couple of stars, practice observing a couple of stars, and use the full moon. Uh, you need bright stars to hold up to the glare of the full moon, and these are bright stars. So there's a, there's a good exercise, good project to go out and watch. Uh, this moon, it's a full moon, and the full moon rises right at sunset, right at dusk. As it's getting dark, you'll see that moon climbing into the sky. So you have all night. It sets at sunrise, and so you have all night to do this observation. Anytime you're out and it's dark and it's clear, do this observation. We can see why. Let's look and see why the full moon rises at uh, sunset. Here it is. Uh, here's the sun. The sun illuminates the half of the earth and the half of the moon that are fa facing it. So each of them have half of the globe facing the sun, and that's the half that's illuminated. For the earth, this is the earth in here. And we're going to have the moon orbiting around this direction in this diagram, and that means the Earth's rotating around that direction, too. Uh, but the sun, is, that's the sunlight half of the Earth. That's daytime. That's noon right there. Sunrise is right here. It's dark over here. The people who are standing at that part of the Earth, they're just rotating into view where they can see the sun. We see the sun coming up over the horizon right here. The people on this side of the Earth are rotating away, so you see the sun disappearing. And so this is sunrise over here. And this is sunset over here, okay? And noon and midnight, and we see the Earth rotating around. Now, the full moon is back here, and the reason that's a full moon, we see the entirety. We can see the half of the moon that faces us. That's the half of the moon that faces us, and that also happens to be the half that's fully illuminated. That's the half that's illuminated by the sun. We see the entire illuminated face of the moon. That's a full moon. That full moon... Starts, it can't be seen when you're on this side of the Earth. You'd have to look down through the Earth in order to see it. It's below our horizon. We have to get around here for it to rotate into view. So just as it's getting dark, the full moon is rotating into view. And just as it's getting daylight, the full moon is rotating out of view. Now, if you go around here, this is a new moon. We don't see any of the illuminated face. It's facing away from us. And it's up during the daytime. You would see that high overhead at noon, and it would just rotate into view in the morning and rotate out of view in the evening. What's going to happen as the week progresses here from the 20th on through the, the 25th, 26th, 27th is the moon's moving this direction in its orbit. It's getting around here, and it's getting to be less full force. By the time it gets over here, we're going to see only half of the illuminated face. The illuminated face is here. We see the half of the moon that, that points at us. Half of it's dark, half of it's light. We see a half moon. Uh, we call that a third quarter moon because it's, it's three quarters of the way through its, its orbit, through its cycle around there. And so by the time we get around here, that's going to occur on the, the 28th, on Tuesday of, of next week, of the following week. Uh, but we'll have made great progress toward it here. And what happens is it rises later and later. When we see this half moon over here, 
uh, it doesn't pop into view until the middle of the night right there. Everybody who's on this side of the Earth can't see that moon, and you, you could have to look through the Earth in order to see it. And so we have to rotate around here to be able to see it. So it, rot it pops up into view. It rises, we say, in the middle of the night, and then it sets in the middle of the day. So you get up in the morning, and you see the moon hanging in the sky after it started to get to be daylight. You know that that is a waning moon. It's a moon that's getting less full, waning over here. And over here, it's a waxing moon. It's a moon that's getting more full, and you see that in the evening and the afternoon sky before it gets dark. So we see it in the afternoon sky before it gets dark. It's a waxing moon getting fuller. You see it in the morning after sunrise. It's a waning moon. Watch for that to happen as the week wears on here. So as the week, by the time we get to uh, Saturday the 25th, right here. So we got down here on Saturday the 25th. The moon will be rising two hours later. You go out at dark, and it's not there. Uh, you have to wait for it to to get darker, you have to wait for it to rise, and it doesn't get high enough in the sky to observe easily, probably until about 10 o'clock your local time, my local time, but it's going to vary a little bit, and you can start to see it at 10, 10, 30 at night by the time you get out here, and that's the moon, and by that point, the moon will have been moving into Taurus, and there it slides between two bright open star clusters. You got the Hyades, these are young, nearby open star clusters. We've talked about open star clusters a little bit, we're not going to focus on them here today, but you've got a V of stars there in Taurus uh, with bright orange Aldebaran, uh, eye of the bull, uh, bright orange Aldebaran right there glowing, and above there you've got the Pleiades star cluster uh, that is a nice beautiful open star cluster that you can see without any kind of optical aid, and the moon's, moon is sliding right between them. It's going to be a really nice view on the evening of the 25th, but what you can do between the 20th and 25th is watch the moon get less full and watch it rise later in the evening and think about where it's moving in its orbit around this direction and thinking of, think about that that means it's going to be up for a little while after sunrise. So you're up in the morning uh, as it's getting light. Look for the moon to be over in the western part of the sky. Look for the moon to be setting but still in the sky invisible as, as daylight arrives. So that's your project for this week. Think about the moon. Uh, go Use the moon on the 20th to find Dipta and Fomalhaut, two bright stars in the south, and then use the moon later on, on the 25th, to identify the Pleiades star cluster, the Hyades star cluster, and the bright orange star Aldebaran as the moon slides through there. But think about the moon rising later as the week moves on, and, and think about the phase. Think about it waning and moving from full moon to a half moon a week later, a third quarter moon we would call that, and think about why that is, looking at this geometry. The geometry was relatively neat when we started, but, but we, we, we've really filled it in there because we got excited talking about this stuff. Good week for observing. I hope you have clear skies. Enjoy it, everybody, and we'll have something else for you next week. Thank you.